we need to create a virtual machine for the client and we can create this virtual machine with uh, this command so it is an empty uh, virtual machine uh, which means that it doesn't have an operating system installed yet and uh, this vm is for virtual machine because uh, elix D can handle containers as well and uh, its primary interface is connected to LAN 1, which is the LAN of the clients, uh, as we have seen in the diagram of the uh, FUS architecture, FUS network architecture. It has 40 gigabytes of uh, hard disk, uh, 2 gigabytes of, of RAM, and uh, two virtual uh, CPUs. And let's see this. So we see it here. And uh, we also need to attach uh the installation media which is uh, the debian live uh cd dvd i have already downloaded this iso the iso of uh debian installation and uh, i'm going to attach it to to this virtual machine and it can be done with this uh, command lxc config device add uh, add to client one cd run and also good priority equal to one. Let's check the configuration of uh, the devices for this virtual machine. And let's see config. Uh, config device. So it has this uh, this ISO attached as a CD-ROM, and it is going to boot from from this uh, ISO. We can also see a more complete configuration of uh, the virtual machine with uh, this command: LXC config show. Uh, we see that uh, it is an AMD uh, 64 architecture. It has uh, to CPUs, two gigabyte RAM, and this is the hardware address of uh, the interface, of the network interface, uh, and the rest is the devices. Now we can start uh, this virtual machine, uh, and uh, we will attach the we will attach to the graphical uh, console of the virtual machine. The host name, uh, let's, let's call it client one. Domain name, uh, school. Yes. Good password. I'm using a simple password. That's for testing. Uh, a new create a new user let's say user one user name user one password just for testing let's just use the entire disk without without LDM Usually, one of these two options for uh, these partitions is better, but for testing, we can install everything in one partition. Finish partitioning. Try changes to disk, yes. And because this client is uh, behind the FUS server, uh, and we have installed a proxy on the FUS server. In order to access the internet, 
or to access HTTP and HTTPS, we need to use uh, a proxy configuration uh, also during the installation. So we are going to use uh, this proxy as HTTP proxy uh, during the installation. HTTP proxy and the port uh, 8080. Configure the package manager. Network, a network mirror can be used to supplement the software. Uh, use a network mirror? Network mirror? Yes. Now, HTTP, pro HTTP proxy is the HTTP. So uh, for the first client, we have to install it uh, manually, usually. Uh, and uh, once we uh, install the first client, we can copy the image uh, of this uh, client, uh, which clone Zilla to the server and use this image to install uh, the other clients. And this is usually uh, faster and, and more convenient than installing from a CD-ROM. But for, for the first uh, image, for the first client, uh, we have to do it uh, manually. Installation complete, continue. The system is rebooting. But uh, we have to shut it down first and uh, remove the CD and then start it up again. LXC, uh, stop, force. Uh, let's remove the, uh, the CD-ROM device from it. Let's see. Complete device. Client one. Client one. Uh, there is no CD-ROM device. Now, now we can start it uh, with uh, the graphical uh, console. LSC start client one console VGA. And it is putting the Debian that is installed. I, I can log in as a root here with the root password that I gave during the installation. And uh, I can open a terminal. And before uh, continuing uh, with the rest of uh, configuration, uh, I, I will install LXD agent, the same uh, thing that I did on the server because uh, with the LXD agent installed, I can uh, I can access the shell from the host, the shell of the virtual machine, and uh, this is more convenient because I can use copy paste. I can copy paste uh, commands. Here with the graphical interface, I cannot do uh, copy paste. I can copy the installation script uh, of the LXD agent from from the server because uh, right now uh, the configuration of the client is not complete yet, and uh, probably it cannot access. Uh, the, it cannot access the internet properly. So let, let me use secure copy to uh, copy it from, from the server. So. This is the script, it creates a couple of services and enables them. Now I can run uh, commands from, uh, from, from this uh, shell, which is uh, more convenient. Uh, now we will continue with uh, the, the setup of the client, configuration and setup of the client. Uh, we need to add uh, repositories of, uh, of
of the FUS uh, packages and uh, download the, the package FUS client, install the package FUS client. Uh, I'm going to, to add uh, this uh, repository, uh, which is for uh, that part of uh, Bookworm, the latest version of Debian. And I'm going to add this repository as well, which is for the packages of the FUS project. Let me copy this command. So this. These two repositories are added. Uh, I, I need to get also the, the key of the FUS repository. And in order to download the key with uh, wget, I have to uh, export HTTP proxy and HTTP, uh, HTTPS proxy uh, because we cannot access the web uh, otherwise. So let me copy these commands. And uh, now I can update and install the packages. Uh, th there is a warning uh, or a notification, uh, I don't know, uh, that uh, for a rec recent change in uh, Debian. So, yeah, we have to add this line to, to this uh, configuration file uh, in order to, to disable this warning. Uh, it is just a warning, but uh, in case it gets annoying, uh, we can just disable it. And uh, let's try again, update. Now everything seems okay. Uh, let me do an upgrade since there are some packages that need, uh, need to be upgraded. And then we will make uh, this upgrade as well. And then we will install uh, the FUS client. And uh, I also found that uh, we also, in my tests that uh, I've done previously, I, I found that these two packages are needed as well to be installed. It is good to install them right now. Uh, otherwise, they are required later and they may, may break some commands uh, later. So I, I'm going to install these packages as well. Upgrade, nothing, and then release the full client. Yes, it is available. We can install the full client. So they are not uh, installed. Uh, probably there should have been dependencies of uh, full scan since they are uh, required later. But we can install them manually anyway. And uh, now that we installed the package full client, we have this command uh, available full uh, client, and we can see how it can be used with the option help. And, uh, It has some options, add to add this, uh, this machine to the FUSC network, this client. And uh, we can use the option S to install or to configure a standalone machine. And uh, we can use the option G to join this, uh, this client to a certain uh, group or classroom of uh, computers. And uh, we can use the option uh, H to, to set the host name of the client. Right now, the host name is okay. Client one, 
we want it to be current one, but uh, if it is different, we can uh, we can change the host name before uh, connecting uh, the client to, to the server. And there is also this uh, L, uh, which is listing available clusters group groups on the server. Uh, let's see a list of the clusters of group. Uh, I've already created this uh, lab one and lab two. This is for uh, one of the classrooms, and this is for another uh, classroom of uh, computers. But uh, before running the command uh, full client, uh, let's make let's make a snapshot of this virtual machine because uh, right now it is recommended to to take the image uh, and with Clonzilla and store the image of the client and store it in the server with Clonzilla. But we are going to do it later. So uh, let's first make a snapshot of this virtual machine and then uh, continue with the installation of the client. So making the image of the client is recommended to be done before in installing uh, the client with the command host client. Is the option F to force it for shutdown. Anyway. So, uh, Alexi snapshot. Link one. And we have a snapshot here. And uh, let's start it again. Alexi start. Let's get the shell inside uh, the virtual machine, but uh, the virtual machine is not up uh, yet, and uh, the uh, LXD agent is is not uh, running yet. Uh, let's try it again. Okay, now we are inside the virtual machine. Uh, now we will call uh, the command uh, full client uh, to add it to the uh, Octanet configuration. To add this uh, client to the configuration. And we will also add it to the group lab one. And also we will set the host the host name is uh, client one let me check if there is something else and also we will uh, use the option light because uh, by default it installs uh, lots of uh, educational uh, software but since we are just uh, making a test uh, we just need to install uh, the basics uh, not, not everything, in order to make things fast, to make the inst installation fast. And it is going to ask for the root password a couple of times, uh, the password of the root in the server, on the first server. So this is the password of the root of the first server. Now it is starting. It is starting to install uh, additional packages and uh, to make additional configurations. Uh, these packages are related to, to the desktop. As far as the proxy is concerned, uh, the the configuration of apt, which one time was in the file etc apt apt.conf, now yes. it is. In etc apt apt.conf.d and uh, 90 apt cacher and the new port uh, that will be used uh, um, on the server side is uh, 3142. 
which uh, um, by means of APT cacher, so a good APT caching of packages, of Debian packages uh -huh. is done. And uh, when, you, uh -huh. when you need to install hundreds of machines in the school, uh, you see the difference. <laughs> you really notice okay. the difference. So uh, this is going to be done by these uh, Ansible scripts right now? Exactly, exactly, okay. exactly. Okay, I understand, okay. So the installation of client is already finished. Uh, before restarting the server or doing anything else, uh, let me do some small configuration uh, to fix the screen resolution. And uh, this is uh, related to the virtual virtualization that I'm used. In a real machine, probably this configuration is not needed. Uh, let me fix this. Now I can uh, I can restart the client. Start it again. Let me access the graphical console uh, of this virtual machine, and let's see. Console client one UGA and uh, we see the login page of uh, of the client. Let's try to log in first as root. So we need to create users on the full server on the Octanet interface, which manages uh, the users and uh, other things. This is uh, the root user of the client, not of the server. The user that we created using, uh, during installation. This is a welcome screen. And now I'm done on the eye. In order to access the Octanet interface, uh, we need a browser, and it is asking for a username and password. Uh, yes, this is, these are the proxy credentials for the user, just to access internet, but you can uh, escape a few times. Uh, yes, uh, let, let, let me try to escape this time, because I, I just need to access the proxy, and I can access the, uh, uh, the server with Proxy uh, colon uh, thirteen yes, four yes, zero. Yes, but I, I, I have some problems with my keyboard, so uh, let me try to to, fit, to add another keyboard lay layout. Uh, preference. Okay, now it is working. So, proxy and then the port uh, 13402. Is this correct? Okay, it is correct. And now uh, I will log in with username uh, root, which is uh, the user of Octanet. And uh, as password, I'm going to use uh, the uh, ad administrative uh, password, which is not the password of the root in the server, but it is uh, the password given during the configuration of, of the host server. Okay, I am accessing the Octanet interface. 
Now uh, I'll create a user manually and I uh, let me switch the interface to the English. And uh, here at users and groups on, on the right. And then there is, uh, a menu is shown here, users, users and group. And uh, I will create a new user. The name, let's say it is uh, user 01, primary group. Uh, I noticed that there is already a user one in the list. Okay. Uh, probably I've created it uh, before. So let, let's check again uh, all the users, all the users. Yes, uh, there is user 01 uh, already. Let's let's create another user. For example, let's create uh, user 02 because uh, I'm not sure what is the password. I've created this previously, but I'm not sure what is the password of this uh, user. So let's say uh, user 02. Create user, username, user, user, primary group. Let's say it is a docenti, uh, full name, user two, login shell is okay, uh, controller group, home directory is okay, password, uh, let's use a simple password, pass zero two, and confirm, confirm it. And just save. Remember, remember then to propagate uh, uh, yes. in the main. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Ada. And uh, now we need to propagate. It's time that we make configurations to users, etc. We just propagate all this uh, this menu item propagate. Users in group. Uh, propagate uh, net, uh, network permissions uh, so that all the services that use these uh, credentials can get the, the latest version of, of the credentials. And uh, open browser again. Now it is using for credentials, and uh, here uh, we can use as credentials the username and password of uh, a user that is registered on Octonet. Let's try the user that we just created, user 02, and the password, the uh, pass 02. And uh, now we can access the, the internet. Now I will log in as uh, user admin and try to uh, I will log out from user admin and uh, from uh, user root and try to log in as the user that I just uh, created. So, I will use uh, user 02 and then password pass 02. Uh, you are required to change your password. So automatically it is uh, re requesting to change the password on the first login. Uh, let me use a simple password. You need uh, maybe a strong password with some uh, capital letters and numbers. Okay. As long as possible. And uh, now we are on the account on the account of uh, of user zero two. These are all all the programs that are installed. We can explore some of the uh, programs that are installed in here. Accessories. Graphic applications. Settings. Of course, the language can be can be changed for the, for the interface and all the applications. Uh, now you you see it uh, in Italian and uh, uh -huh. okay. other languages are available. Paolo, if you still can have access, uh, can you try to uh, change to switch the language to uh, English? Sure, I can do it. Just a second. Okay. 
there is this application which is in Italian is uh, Candela Lingua mm -hmm. and you can modify into English let's choose English US and then you simply have to log out uh, and uh, mm -hmm. log in again I let you log in okay let me try to log in again user 02 password nice time password Don't ask me this, keep all names. When you typically uh, change language, uh, the system asks after the login if you want to change the names of the of the common uh, uh, directory. Uh, in the home directory, yes, of course. And uh, so now, now it is in English. Okay. So this is for uh, just one user. And uh, we can add users one by one, of course, but this is tedious to uh, import a list a long list of users in the in the OctoNet interface, but uh, there is another uh, way, or there are some other ways, a couple of other ways to import bulk users, and we can use we can try the one with uh, comma separated values. So we can have a file with comma separated values of usernames, passwords, etc., uh, and then we can import it into the OctoNet interface and it will create all the users uh, automatically. So let's uh, give it a try. Interface, uh, I, I have to add the English keyboard again because otherwise it is a problem with RDP, which I'm using to access this desktop. Okay, if you want, I can do it. Okay, uh, perfect. I, I, yeah, I remember how to do it. Uh, add English, uh, English US. Okay. Now I change the keyboard layout to English. So I can type correctly. Proxy one three four zero two, which is the port of the OpenNet. And uh, let me log in as a user root. Administrative password. And first of all, uh, go to user and groups and just make a propagate uh, network access permissions to update the password of uh, user 02. And uh, now here at users and groups, we have this uh, create uh, import from, import uh, user accounts from CSV file. And there is also this mask create, uh, but uh, we will use uh, this import from CSV. But uh, before doing this import, we need a CSV file. Let's open a terminal and uh, create a simple CSV file uh, with user accounts. Actually, uh, it's not convenient for me to copy paste uh, here uh, things, so uh, I will create it from the command line. The command line uh, here. And let's I am as a uh, user zero two on the account of user zero two. And the, the reason here, I, I have an example of a CSV file. Uh, let me create this example. Copy and paste. correctly and anyway uh, I can 
Uh, and uh, here the first field is the full username. The second field is uh, the username or user ID. And uh, the third field is the password. And uh, the last field is the group to which uh, this account will be added, the, the main group. And uh, let, let us try to import this file. But uh, before in importing it, we, we can check it. Uh, check CSV file prior to import. Choose file on the home. Th there is uh, this one, user list.csv. Uh, username col column uh, is the second one because the first one is uh, the full name of the user. And it says that uh, the CSV file has no known or, uh, errors. Uh, you can import it. Uh, let's try to import it. Uh, import from CSV. Choose file. User list of CSV. Select. And uh, now we are still uh, setting up the import. The import is not done yet because uh, we need to say which. Uh, field is which column. Uh, it has detected that this is the full name. Uh, this is the name's the name. No, this is not uh, the name. This is the username. And uh, uh, this is the password. Let me set the password here. And this is the username. Here. And uh, this is the the primary group, so it is uh, very easy to rearrange uh, the fields according to each column. So uh, full name, username. Uh, no, this is not the surname. Password. This is the password. And uh, primary group. Full name, username, password, primary group. Okay. Now uh, we do an upload. All users were imported. And we see the list of uh, users that, that we just imported. And uh, I, I can try to log out uh, now and uh, log in with one of these users, for example, user 003, uh, which I think has a password pass 003. Uh, let, let me check again. Remember to propagate, uh, remember to propagate the permissions. Yes, right. Uh, thank you, uh, Paolo. I always forget to forget permission. Uh, and so let me check the password for this uh, user 003. I, I think it is pass 003, but uh, let me check it. Yes, it is. I go to the graphical interface uh, again. Uh, let me close the browser and uh, then uh, I will log out. Log out. And try to log in with the uh, user 003. Plus 003. Uh, Maybe I didn't try to correct it. Let me try it again. Uh, Only two zeros. Only two zeros. Yes. Yes, it is correct. Now it is uh, working. Uh, I made a uh, typing mistake uh, during the first try. So, it is. Uh, I'm on the account of uh, user 003. But uh, if I open a terminal, no, not this one.
to this one. And if I work uh, print working directly, it is uh, from user 003. But actually, this is uh, from 003 on the, on the server, and uh, we can we can check that uh, it is on the server. For example, let me create a file touch. Test keyboard problem, but anyway. Uh, and uh, if I go to the server, uh, I can find, find this file on the server because the home directory for all the users are stored on the server and are, uh, are accessed through the internet by NFS. So let, let me check it on the server. Um, Uh, and we see this uh, test.txt uh, that uh, we created. Uh, and may maybe I can log into uh, the account of user 003. So all the accounts and uh, the, the data of the users are, are stored on the server. Now, now that we uh, that we tested uh, user accounts. Uh, let's try to make uh, an image uh, with Clonzilla or the first client and then install a second client from, from this image. And we will see that it is much faster than installing from, uh, from the CD. At least it is uh, autom uh, automatic. Uh, as soon as you start it, then you don't have to uh, set up anything. It, it, it works on itself until everything is done. Let, let me stop uh, client one. Let's see. I will revert back client one to snap zero, which uh, was at the point uh, where we just had installed uh, the package uh, foots client, but uh, we did not uh, execute yet the command foots, foots client to make the configuration of the, of the client. So let's see in the code. Client one. You see that we have this uh, snapshot, snap zero. And let's see restore. Client one, zero. Let's start client one again. Let's see. But uh, actually, I, I uh, made a mistake because uh, while starting client one, uh, I want to uh, to access the, the the BIOS menu and boot from uh, from the network uh, in order to to start the Transilla program. So let me stop it again. Client one uh, console PGA. I'm going to press escape as uh, as soon as it starts in order to access the BIOS menu and go to boot manager, start from the network interface, boot it from the network interface.
it is starting uh, Clonezilla, and uh, we will run uh, the manual uh, menu of uh, Clonezilla since we have to copy the image from the client to, to the server. It is asking for a password. The password is false. The Clonezilla system is uh, booting up from the network. A password of Clonezilla on the server. Press enter, start Clonezilla. Device to image. Yes. Enter. Beginner, save disk, I'll save all the disk. And the image name is okay. I'm just using the default options. Uh, typically in our schools, what, uh, what we do is providing, providing two uh, Clonzilla images uh, for FUSA. One is with uh, uh, a partitioning scheme based on uh, MBR, master boot record, which is also compatible with WEFI, provided uh, you create uh, an EFI partition. And uh, we started also creating uh, a, um, an image based uh, on uh, GPT partitioning scheme, uh, which goes, of course, well with the uh, recent WEFI uh, machines, which are not really uh, compatible with uh, the old uh, MBR partitioning scheme. I think it, it is uh, always a uh, good practice for, for, a, uh, for a school to install the first client and then uh, generate uh, their own uh, Clonezilla image themselves. And it is not actually uh, so difficult. So uh, all the steps that I followed were almost the, all the default steps. And, and uh, now the image is done and I will uh, power off uh, this client. Uh, and let me check uh, on the server, what, what is going on on the server. So here I, uh, I'm on the server. Uh, on the server side, uh, the Clonezilla configurations and uh, data uh, are stored uh, on the uh, on the directory Clonezilla. So if I go to this uh, directory, I will see that uh, this image, uh, this. Uh, uh, directory uh, has been just created. It is uh, the directory of the image. Okay, let, let's start. Uh, let's try to uh, create a new client and then install it from the Clonezilla image. So I'll create a new virtual machine uh, named uh, client2. It, it will be an empty virtual machine without uh, any operating system. And then uh, I'm going to set uh, this option, security, secure boot uh, equal to false to, to this virtual machine. And uh, actually, I don't uh, need to set this boot priority equal to one because I can press escape and then select a boot from network. So let, let me check the configuration.
we have a uh, disk of 40 gigabytes and uh, a network interface connected to, to LAN 1. So let me boot uh, client 2 from, from network. LXC start. Client 2, console. To VGA. And I'm going to press escape as, as soon as it starts. Okay. Both from network. Uh, this time I will choose this option uh, automatic transilla. The password is again FUS. And uh, there is this uh, message. Uh, there is no valid configuration to set up this computer. Uh, but so it is going to ask interactively for uh, the host name of this client. And I'm going to use uh, client two. And also which image we want to use for installing this client. There is one image. Uh, join this client to the FUS domain, yes, uh, the cluster, it is lab1. This uh, the data are correct. Uh, now we see that uh, the data that we inserted at the beginning of the cloning of uh, client 2 are saved in, in this file. It is the host name, the MAC address of the, of the client, uh, the name of the image, and uh, join to uh, this cluster, lab1. And if we need to uh, reinstall it again from uh, Clonzilla, next time it is not going to uh, ask again this uh, question, these questions, because they are already stored on this file, computer list. And after uh, restoring the image, uh, it reboots. And uh, after reboot, it continues with some other installations. So let's access the graphical interface again and see uh, what is going on. So it, it is rebooting after the image uh, was restore to this client and then it will continue with some other installations and we actually see that it is running the ansible scripts uh, of the client and this time uh, the the client has not asked for the the server password because uh, there was a, a key exchange between the, the client and the server. And so in this case installation also runs faster without interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, thank you, Paolo. I, I missed this. <laughs> uh, I didn't remember that the first time uh, it asked me for the password three times for the root password. But uh, this time uh, this is uh, happening automatically. So this is why we uh, so when the image uh, and the is uh, is on the ser the the whose image is on the server ready and when there is a line in computer list uh, uh, in the computer list file uh, we we call this installation simply F12 installation so you simply need to press F12 and then the machine is reinstalled.
Yes, it is uh, this this line in uh, computer list dot text. Yeah. A possible future modification uh, within uh, the uh, computer list file would be to add some parameters. For example, one of the parameters could be, for example, the language for setting the language for the entire school. Or it happens in some of our schools that uh, we need to install some clients in Italian language and some other clients in German language. So it mm -hmm. could be useful to, to have this parameter, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, these parameters actually are passed to the Ansible scripts, uh, isn't it? Yes, right. Or, or better, sorry, uh, not directly to the Ansible script, but uh, to a file which is called the client script, which is uh, um, uh, which is, uh, is is present in the directory as us SRV Clonezilla client scripts SRV. Yes, yes, uh, I am on this directory. Uh, and SRV uh, in the directory client scripts. And the client script is the name of a uh, file. Oh, that's good. Yes. So this script is executed by Clonezilla automatically after uh, restoring an image, I think. Okay. Yes. And then there is the other script, which is uh, um, outside the directory. Or, for example, the name of the machine is changed. Okay, in SRV Clonezilla, do an LS, a okay, script. Okay, and there are also some parameters are read and verified. We we also made some modifications to these two scripts lately. Uh, for example, when a, um, a line is not found in computer list, uh, remember that uh, the, the interactive uh, dialogue asks uh, the name of the cluster. Um, of course, the, the technician could not remember the, the clusters that are available in a school, and there we added a select list of all the clusters mm -hmm. available or the possibility to create a new cluster. So this, okay, here you see the dialogues. Oh yeah, this is uh, executed before the uh, before the cloning uh, is done, uh, this case. Before the cloning, yes. Sorry, I, I told you the uh, client script, you know, it's script, sorry. So this, this is ex executed before the cloning and uh, this other one is executed after uh, cloning is finished, I think. Exactly, exactly where the machine is uh, rebooted uh, uh, twice. Uh, the first time to stop unattended, uh, uh, unattended upgrades, Debian unattended upgrades, which typically run the first time you run the machine. So we do a reboot, and after the reboot, uh, the, the packages are updated. Uh, in this case, the, the first client is also upgraded because if we could, you could have a new version of it, and uh, and uh, after that again, the machine is rebooted. Uh, I think uh, is finished and the, the uh, client has been uh, rebooted. So uh, let's try to look again at the graphical interface of the client. Uh, so 
we, st uh, we have this uh, resolution uh, problem, but uh, I can fix it because I can access I can access the shell of the of the client. Okay. So let me find the code that is fixing this resolution problem. It is booking Debian. And uh, we get uh, the first client login. Uh, now I can use one of the users that, that we registered uh, pre previously. For example, user 0 to. And uh, I can access my account uh, from the second client as well. So from any client using uh, the same username and password, I can access my account. And this is because uh, the accounts uh, are centralized and also the uh, authentication is uh, centralized uh, on the server. Uh, here we see also the file that we created uh, previously. So uh, I think this is enough uh, for testing, and uh, we can we can close the uh, the, the demonstration. Uh, there is nothing else in the list to, uh, to be done.